name is Deepika Ladu. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Therapy, housed in the College of Applied Health Sciences at the University of Illinois at Chicago. The title of this manuscript is 25-Year Physical Activity Trajectories and the Development of Subclinical Coronary Artery Disease as Measured by Coronary Artery Calcium in the Cardia Study. Uh, so this was a primary question that was um, really asked by my, uh, two of my primary co-authors, Dr. Jamal Rana and Dr. Steve Sidney, um, who have seen this somewhat uptick or somewhat higher prevalence of coronary calcification, which is an indicator of subclinical atherosclerosis. So subclinical atherosclerosis is, is one of those uh, diseases that kind of fall under the umbrella of cardiovascular disease. Uh, it's specifically or more identified as um, plaque that sits and deposits in the arteries that um, feed into your heart. And so when plaque is, uh, when there's too much plaque in your arteries, blood, uh, oxygenated blood can't go to the heart properly, which makes your heart ultimately work harder. When these plaques rupture, that's usually when we see um, some type of event, whether it's a, it's a heart attack or having chest pain, but this usually leads to the development of atherosclerosis. So the objective of this, of this study was really to understand um, what's the association between uh, physical activity patterns or what we call trajectories measured over 25 years uh, and its association with the development of subclinical atherosclerosis um, measured by coronary artery calcium. Um, and, the, and some of the underlying pre premise is that, you know, we know that exercise or physical activity is, is an evolving process. So do, uh, by virtue of it evolving and our behavior always changing, um, do these changes uh, relate to atherosclerotic risk, especially during that transition from young adulthood to middle age, and, and is this another uh, reason or justification to practice prevention earlier in life? The study included about 3,175 black and white male and female participants who were a part of the CARDIA study. Now these participants were recruited from four clinic centers that included uh, Minneapolis, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Oakland, California, and Chicago, Illinois. What our findings basically showed was that uh, across three of these distinct physical activity patterns that we found, young white men um, who engaged in physical activity levels three times the recommended guidelines had this higher odds or greater risk of developing subclinical atherosclerosis by middle age. However, we did not find this association in black male or females. So if you look at the results of this study, um, what they indicate is that white males in particular who are exercising at this higher dose, specifically this uh, level of three times the recommended uh, guidelines, have this higher risk of developing, uh, developing subclinical atherosclerosis by middle age. So these findings basically, um, how, how it relates to clinical practice is that uh, what they suggest is that white males in particular who are exercising beyond um, recommended levels may confer atherosclerotic burden by virtue of having coronary, higher coronary artery calcium levels. Uh, however, these results do need to be taken with a grain of caution, um, as do other population studies, given that it is the prospective nature of the study design. There are a number of other questions that we don't know, really, regarding um, how physical activity impacts uh, Cardiovas the cardiovascular system, both biologically and, and physiologically. For example, there are some studies that have shown that you know individuals who are engaging in higher doses or higher levels of physical activity, such as what we saw in our study, yes, they do have higher uh, higher CAC levels or coronary artery calcium levels, but the atherosclerotic benefit of physical activity may be by virtue that physical activity is preventing these CAC uh, these, these calcified plaques from rupturing. So in essence, there's a lot that we don't know. How this relates to a client is that, um, or into the clinical world per se, is that 
maybe we should just pay a little bit more attention to um, to looking at atherosclerotic risk even among those who are exercising um, and especially among those who are exercising at higher doses. So at the end of the day, exercise is medicine and I really don't want people who read this paper to think that this is distracting away from that message because uh, you know the, the benefits of exercise are indisputable and it is still one of the best primary and primary or secondary prevention methods that that should be prescribed and should be practiced but what this paper and what this data does suggest is that maybe there is an upper threshold of physical activity in which uh, you know there's an upper threshold of a benefit uh, what we came out of this study is that we really need to have a better idea or a better understanding of um, how specifically race may play a role in the association between higher doses of physical activity and uh, atherosclerotic risk. We also really need to have a better understanding of how physical activity in terms of type, duration, and intensity impact uh, atherosclerotic risk and really impact uh, the, the levels of coronary artery calcium that's identified in, in specific populations. Um, we also need to have a better understanding of how exercise dose and really the prognosis of physical activity um, is understanding how that prognosis uh, leads to an accrual of cardiovascular benefit and whether there is this true existence of an upper limit of cardiovascular benefit that's associated with physical activity. And last, we need to see if these findings uh, hold true in other populations. In this particular study, we did look at black and white male and females, but really what about other race and ethnic groups? And what are the biological and physiological um, pathways or mechanisms that may explain some of these results? There's plenty of research still yet to, to be done. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.